Hi, I'm John Weston. Um, I'm a physician. I'm board certified in neuromusculoskeletal medicine and also board certified in family medicine. I've been practicing for 23 years. I've been working for the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine for 10 years. Currently, I'm the director of osteopathic principles and practices. I'm also a regional dean, and I also see patients at Arnott Health. So, Dr. Weston, can you tell me a little bit about your personal journey and motivation for pursuing a career in osteopathic medicine? So, I was working out at a fitness center, and I had a friend who was um, deadlifting, and um, his back seized up. And this had happened an awful lot, actually. And he had seen orthopedic surgeons, he had seen chiropractors, he had done physical therapy, but despite that, his back continued to seize up, and it was limiting his ability to perform. And also, simultaneously working out at the fitness center was an, um, an osteopathic resident. So a physician who um, was at a, a residency, it was at um, Wilson Memorial Hospital in um, Johnson City, New York. They're resident there. And they performed osteopathic manipulation. And they took my friend, they put him on one of the um, bench press tables, and they performed a manipulation on him. And after that, he never had back pain ever again. And I was always very interested about how the body and um, utilizing that body for optimal performance and to, to see someone who had failed in all the medical aspects um, get better with just one treatment um, was, was a life transforming experience for me. And I decided at that point in time, I wanted to go to medical school. I wanted to be someone who could help people be out of pain. Um, physical pain is the number one thing we spend most on in the United States. And we spend more on that than we do on cancer. We spend more on that than we do on heart disease. And then we do on diabetes. It's the number one thing we spend money on. And so if I can help people get better and also save the United States some money and keep us going from bankrupt, I think it's a great thing. It's also a great thing because you can help people perform better. If you're in constant pain and you're, you have neck pain, most people have some kind of neck pain or back pain. And it really limits their performance, whether they're someone who works in an office or an athlete, you know, just doing some kind of data entry, you know, they have this kind of, kind of pain and it really affects their daily life. Or a lot of times people get headaches, you know, and a lot of those headaches are coming from their neck or their upper back. And you can make that better so they can have, enjoy their family better or their job better or their kids better, or just be able to perform better athletically or do the things that you want to do in life. So let's face it, life is hard enough to get through dealing with constant pain. It makes it that much harder. When you're in constant pain, it decreases your ability to concentrate. It decreases your ability to, to persevere through things. And so I, my goal is to make people better. And so that I do that, I have a neuromuscular medicine clinic here at Arnett Health, which is in Elmira, New York. And I also teach students how to do these techniques so then they can actually go out and help people as well. So that's the motivation. So in your opinion, what distinguishes osteopathic medicine from other medical practices? What value does it bring to healthcare as opposed to any others? So an osteopathic physician is a um, licensed physician. They can prescribe medications. They can be an orthopedic surgeon. They can be a radiologist. They can do anything your typical, um, we'll say normal physician can do. But the other thing that osteopathic physicians can do is they have a superpower. They can palpate things that other physicians haven't been trained to do. And they can also do techniques to take people out of pain and make their life better. And so when I'm teaching students, I sort of say, hey, I'm teaching a superpower. And whether that superpower is useful in clinical diagnosis. So for example, when you're listening to the heart, you need to listen to the heart in certain spots. And one of the spots is the second intercostal space. And so you need, to palp you need to palpate and be in between the ribs, right? If you're on a rib and you're trying to listen to the heart, you're not gonna hear as well. It's like you're soundproofing the heart. And you also wanna make sure that um, you're in the right spot. So a lot of times when I see physicians, they're just sort of guessing where they're putting the stethoscope. No, you need to palpate and make sure you're in the right spot where you're putting that stethoscope to be able to hear the right valves that you want to auscultate. If you're not in the right spot, you're not going to be able to hear those 
valves optimally. And if you're on top of a rib, you're soundproofing that area. So by making it so your hands are optimal tools, you can do better physical examinations, okay? And not only that, I will teach you techniques to help people with their jaw pain. I mean, who do you know that doesn't clench their jaw at night, right? I can help you so you can treat the masseter muscle to take that pain away, to help with headaches, to help with back pain, to help with neck pain. So I'm teaching you a superpower that sort of no matter what specialty you do, you can help people become better. So I think osteopathic medicine is regular medicine, but with a superpower. And that superpower is in physical diagnosis, and it's also to help people become better. So how did you come to choose LECOM as where you wanted to spend uh, your teaching, your, your, your experience as a teacher, and why LECOM? So I think LECOM sort of picked me at this point in time. So my residency director was uh, Richard Terry, and I was working for him. I had my own practice in Ithaca, New York, and I would see patients there four days a week, and then I'd work for Dr. Terry one day a week at my old residency, which is in Johnson City, New York. It was Wilson Family Medicine. I'd work there for him, and I would teach medical students and residents. And he said, you know, John, I've got this idea. I want to spread... I want to spread the gospel, gospel of osteopathy to more people, and I want, to, I want to establish a medical school, and I'd like you to do that with me. And, you know, if you've ever met Rich Terry, he's very convincing. Like, he could get me to jump off a bridge and tell me I'm just going swimming. You know, the guy is just an amazing person. And he said, I'd like you to do that. And so when he established, you know, that he was going to start a medical school, I quit my job, my own practice, and I commute here. It's an hour each way from Ithaca, New York, which is not always fun when it's wintertime out. But I do that because he initially got me to do it. He bought me into his dream. Now it's my dream as well. And I just enjoy teaching the students. I enjoy getting them, you know, to learn these techniques, to seeing more than, okay, there's a problem with the kidney, or there's a problem with the stomach, there's a problem with the brain, there's a problem with the muscle. Everything is intertwined. I mean, everything sort of comes together. And I think. I think everyone's sort of seen that now, and that's one of the tenets of osteopathy is you have to look at the whole person, the whole being, to be able to make them better, right? So if someone's having pain in their neck, the pain might not really be there. The pain might be they have a short leg. The pain might be their hips are bad, and that's just where their compensation is. So if you're just focusing there, that's not really going to work all that well. And, you know, you have to look at the whole, you have to look at the whole picture. And so I really much enjoy, you know, watching students sort of pick that up, being able to use their hands, be able to make people feel better, but also sort of like having them come in at one level of professionalism and then teaching them how, how far they can develop and become better. Because medical student is not, or medical school is not an easy thing and it's very challenging. So you have to optimize their performance. So the whole thing is to optimize people's performances. So whether that's in the OPP classroom, or whether that's seeing patients out in the real world, or whether it's just getting them to be able to think better, right? I mean, neuroscience is amazing. Forming memories is, is a huge thing. I mean, teaching people how to study and how to form memories is, is an amazing art that you have to, have to learn. If you are in fight or flight, if you are nervous, if you are scared, it's going to be very hard to, one, make new memories, and very hard, to to recall memories. So teaching students on how to take exams and how to best absorb information and then recall it is really a lot of fun for me. So you mentioned that there's many of osteopathy techniques that you know students are learning on a regular basis. What are there any specific osteopathy techniques or philosophies that differentiate LECOM from other schools? For an aspiring medical student? Would be? I think the best thing about, and the reason you'd want to come to LECOM, there's a couple different reasons. The first thing is very professional. All right, let's face it, at this point in time, there's a lot of medical schools opening up. The problem with those medical schools is once you're done with those first two years, they don't have enough clinical sites for you to learn at. So here at LECOM in Elmira and LECOM in general, we have more sites that you can go to than any other school I know of. We have more sites than we need. 
So a lot of schools right now are opening up and they don't have places to send their students to learn their clinical skills. The other thing that we do is we teach professionalism. When you come here, you come here, you're on time. You're dressed professionally and you learn how to act like a physician. So when you go out in the real world, you can get a job. You can ask professionally. The other thing is, is when you, the biggest thing about medical school is you're gonna take on debt. Unfortunately, the average osteopathic medical student has about $240,000 in debt. And they're paying approximately 7% interest. So they're accumulating debt every year after they graduate of about $18,000. That's just what they're compounding interest that they're adding to their principal every year. It's really important that you're able to go out and get a job, that there is a residency program that you can get. You can look in the New York Times every March. They have big articles that say, all these medical students are graduating from medical school. They have these huge debts and they can't find jobs. Well, I'll tell you right here and now that if you graduate from LECOM and you have a good disciplinary record and you graduate on time, we can find a residency program for you because we have all these programs. So you will have a job and you'll be able to pay your loan back and you'll be able to enjoy your life because we've trained you well and we've got these spots. And we get calls every year from other medical schools saying, hey, can you help us find a position for this student? Can you help us find a position for this other student? Because they haven't taken the time to build up these networks of both having places at their clinical sites and having residency programs set up for them where they can put their students. And I'll tell you, Dr. Richard Terry was the one who's instrumental at setting up these residency programs here in New York State. So, we are lucky in that way. If you're going to spend the money and you want to become a physician, you want to make sure that you have a job. And I tell you, a lot of it really breaks my heart seeing a lot of students graduating and not being able to get residencies. That's not going to happen here at LECOM. So if you come here, you'll be able to do physical diagnosis very well. You'll be able to change people's lives with your hands. If you do well here and you graduate, you don't cause any problems, you will be able to get both clinical rotations and have a job. And that's super important. Now, getting a medical student lined up with a residency or a program right after they graduate, what are some examples of LECOM's curriculum and approach that prepares these students so well for, you know, providing holistic and patient-centered care when they go on forward? Well, I think the first thing is starting off from day one is we teach you to be a professional. When you come here, you're dressed as a professional. You have a tie on, you're dressed, you're dressed in professional dress, you show up on time, and you're respectful to your professors, you're respectful to your other students. So that carries a lot, because a lot of places aren't really looking, aren't training their students to be professional. So we want you to be professional. You know how to act, you know how to walk, you know how to talk. And you sort of, you show up on time, and those are big things. So when a residency program is interviewing a LECOM student, they know that LECOM student's gonna be there early, they're going to work hard and they're going to stay late until they know what they're, what they're doing for, until they're done with the job. They can be dependable. Someone needs a helping hand, they're going to be there to help. So the reputation precedes itself. So residency programs want LECOM students because they know they're going to show up, they know they're going to work hard, and they're going to do the job and do it well and represent the, the residency well. That's huge. As far as when people come here, you know, we're teaching them how to look at the whole person. You know, when you, when you meet someone on the street or you meet someone, you don't have any idea of what that person's going through. That person might have just been diagnosed with some kind of disease. They might be suffering from depression. That person might be going through some kind of personal crisis. And looking at the whole person and being able to take that into account and treating that person like a person, not just like a rat who's come into your office and, and just giving them a diagnosis, saying this is a problem, I think that's very, very important. So with these students and, you know, with LECOM itself, one of the biggest things that everyone always mentions is PBL. With the problem-based learning curriculum, how does it prep these students on forward? You mentioned professionalism and, you know, first in, last out type of mentality when these students enter the field. Tell us a little bit how a problem-based learning or even um, integrating OMN or 
OMT to their medical practices? How does it prep them and, and make them um, hold them to a higher standard when they pick, pick up a physician? I don't know if it holds them to a higher standard. I think what it does is it teaches them to be critical thinkers, right? So in a lot of medical schools, they are lectures, and those lectures are crammed down your throat. What we do is we give them broad things to read about, and they have to figure out what's important, okay? And what to sort of enhance themselves with, and what areas they're weak in, and how to get better. Listen, studies have been done, and a lot of stuff that we teach in medical school, whether it's LeCon or whether it's Harvard or John Hopkins, is wrong. And it will be incorrect in 10 years from now. So you need to be able to create students that are lifelong learners, and then that have that curiosity to look up things. So when they go into practice, they're curious and they keep up to date and they're able to do that. So if, if someone just has lectures and they're force fed those lectures and the, it's sort of like giving it to them, they don't have to go out and feed for themselves. But if you teach people how to find information and how to critically evaluate that information and then look and sort of say, hey, you're weak here, get strong here, that's building education for life. And that's the kind of doctor you want. You don't want a doctor who's been practicing what they taught in medical school 10 years ago, which is now obsolete. You want someone who has and has been trained with the ability to go find the relevant information, to be able to critique that information, and then be honest and say, you know, I'm not as strong as this as I'd like to be. I need to go find more information. That's someone you want. You don't want someone who's practicing old stuff just because it's been given to them. You want someone who can go out there, evaluate the evidence, and be hungry for that. So we'll talk a little bit about the extracurriculars that medical students endure uh, throughout their process and throughout the uh, medical school journey. Tell me, you know, how LECOM really emphasizes community engagement and outreach and volunteering. How does it contribute to developing well-rounded physicians? Uh, well, osteopathic physicians, that is. Well, it doesn't matter if you're an osteopathic physician or a physician. You want someone who can relate to human beings. You know, a lot of times you get stuck in these four walls and these ivory towers and you forget what it's like to, you know, deal with regular human beings. And then that goes on to the clinic where, you know, you look at patients as just widgets and you just work through them, right? So we have coat drives where you, you give coats out to, to patients. You do blood pressure checks where you're helping people get their blood pressure where it needs to be. You're engaging in a community, in a community that can definitely use help and you can see the humanity of people. And then how can you make a difference in those people's lives? I think that's, I think that's really important because as you go up the level of training, uh, becoming a physician, it's been shown that physicians and medical students as they go and they become residents and then attendings, as you go up that ladder, they lose empathy for the patients a lot of times. And so teaching them that here, how human beings are and how fragile sometimes people's healths and lives can be is really, really important because those, those sort of, those beginning feelings or those beginning introductions can stay with them for the rest of their training. Wow, that's, not, that's very impactful. Now, just from your experiences as a, an instructor, a professor, or even in the medical school journey, are there any success stories that stick out to you most about, you know, maybe from LECOM graduates who have excelled in their careers as osteopathic physicians or any, you know, just along your journey, any that stick out success stories? I mean, I think, I think the, the important thing is to, to take students, get them through these four years of medical school. I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a, if you can get someone through that, it's a tough journey. It's not easy. And for them to be successful and to watch them come in and teach them, like they usually come in and their skills from undergrad aren't sufficient to get them through medical school and to teach them new skills that get them through these four years. But not only these four years, but the, the residency and also things that they can use in their practice. I mean, those things are very, they're very, it's, it's nice to see. I consider those things successful. If I can take someone who's struggling in their first year medical school and teach them new skills and get them to just not graduate but to thrive here and learn and come over their fears. A lot of kids, especially after this COVID scare, suffer from anxiety and getting them to overcome their, their anxiety, their fear, and become fearless and become hungry for knowledge and curious for knowledge. I consider that 
really successful. And then, then going from there and doing the residency that they want to do and being able to change people's lives. I mean, that, that is success. I mean, that's success. And, and you can do it here at LECOM on a broad scale. And one last question. How do you envision the future of osteopathic medicine? And how does LECOM play a role in shaping this future? Well, LECOM is the largest medical school in the United States. And so, you know, our provost is very dedicated to making sure and ensuring osteopathic medicine thrives here in the large, largest medical school in the United States. And so when students come in here, we teach them things that they can utilize through their whole life to not only help themselves, mind, body, spirit, and how, the, and how structure and function interact, but then utilizing that in also their families, also in their patients. And so I think the core tenets are always gonna be the same. I think osteopathy was way, or osteopathic medicine, excuse me, was way ahead of its time. You know, we're back in 18, you know, 74, when AT still opened up his school. We're talking about mind, body, spirit, and all these interconnections. I think just now you're seeing everyone catch up to osteopathic medicine and actually considering how all these things are interrelated. So I don't know if osteopathic medicine is gonna change so much as everyone's sort of catching up to osteopathic medicine and really discovering, wow, this is something that our goal is, our founder A.T. Still said, the goal of osteopathic medicine is to find the health in every individual and augment that health. So it becomes a flame and they become stronger. Not to find the disease, because most people can find diseases. It's fairly easy to find a disease and make a diagnosis, right? But if you can find their health and augment